going up on the tower.
like horse management, guided tours, educational programs, or restaurant reservations, visit us online at horse.com. That was the Sky Tower, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Now we're off to do some more fun things. Let's go do this. We are entering Antarctica. You can see it's absolutely insanely crazy busy here today. Like ridiculously crazy busy here today. That's a line for food, y'all. For Expedition Cafe. That's the line. You can see it keeps going and going and going just for food. That's the line for all the penguins. This is insane. Look how long that line is for food. It's all the way over there for food. And it goes all the way around that way. Absolutely crazy business. Exactly all that. The line is still going for the food. The line ends for the food right here, and you can see that's where you go for the food. And this is where the line ends. It's crazy. Smells like fish. Oof. All right, we're heading over to the sharks. We'll have to see how long the line is over by the sharks. See how that goes. As you guys can see, once again, it's absolutely crazy busy here. Crazy, crazy busy. Well, let's head over to Shark, see how long that is. We are now at Shark Encounter. We're gonna go through the tube right now and check out the new sharks that they have going on. I think they have a new hammerhead, so hopefully you can see that. in here and I'm betting this is the line to go to the shark tube which means that it's gonna be like an hour to two hour wait to get to the shark tube. Not even worth it. Not even worth it. Holy cow. If we do make it to the shark tube I will uh, come back uh, and put the video on but I don't know if we're gonna stick around in here because it looks like it's a, at least an hour wait and it is not worth anything more than five minutes to go through that. So we shall see. All right, so we did not uh, wait around. It's hour and a half, two hour wait, easy to get to that, the shark tube right now. And if you've been here before, you know it's absolutely not worth it uh, for hour and a half, two hours. Not worth it at all. Uh, parks are crazy busy. It's the busiest week, so it's expected, but. We'll just come back another time. We got premiere passes. We can come back whenever we want, right? So uh, we just go on and do something else. Hopefully, we'll find something else to do. But I have a feeling that now it's the heat of the day. It seems to be getting extremely, extremely busy now. It's probably not going to be worth too much of a wait, though. Mine's just for food. It looked to be like an hour plus long. Uh, so that's crazy in and of itself. We'll see if we even stick around. We may just come back another day. 
Well, we made it to the Orca show and it's about at capacity. So we got what seats we could and we're gonna do the show. And then I think we may call it a day because it is absolutely nuts here. Uh, there's at least an hour long, an hour long wait for all, pretty much getting any snack, any food, uh, every, Every little encounter that you could walk, the walkthroughs are an hour, hour and a half, two hour long wait. Shark Encounter was about at least an hour, it looked more like an hour and a half, two hour wait to get to the tube. Um, so it's crazy. Note to self, next year we do not come the, the week after Christmas uh, because it's absolutely insane guys. Insane. Crazy. But, hey, we got, we're making the best of it, making the most of it. We got to see dolphins today, the sea lions and the otters, we're going to see the orcas. Uh, we went on the tower, so it's been an all in all a good day. So we're gonna enjoy the Orca show and uh, maybe call it a night. Get some sleep because we're heading to the beach tomorrow. So let's check this out. Let's see, this place is packed. Absolutely packed. There's Kelly and Hayden and Brandy. Once the show starts, I'll come back on and we will. Uh, start videotaping the show. As much as my arm can pull out, my phone's almost dead, so we'll see if I have enough to, to film for that. If not, it'll end when it ends, guys. And if I don't get to save, have a flutter whack and good day. members of our killer whale family demonstrating their incredible size, speed, power, and complex learning abilities. These behaviors keep our whales active and engaged. 
SeaWorld's killer whales have inspired generations all over the world, and we are excited to share their story with you today. Killer whales are the ocean's top predator. They use cooperation and communication, not just size and strength, to take their place at the top of the ocean's food web. At the bottom are small animals, like krill. At the top, the apex predator, the killer whale. Killer whales are as big as a bus, faster than an Olympic swimmer. High fly and powerful. We're going to see all that and more. These behaviors contribute to an environment that is full of enrichment. We spend days, weeks, months, and years building relationships with our whales. This creates trust, and that allows us to do some amazing things. For example, when you visit the doctor, you present your arm to draw blood, or step on the scales and see how much you weigh. It's much the same with our whales. Today, we'll see the whales moving together in unison. These synchronized behaviors strengthen social bonds and enable them to problem solve as a group. Working together as a team makes them the ocean's top predator. Scientifically known as Orsinus orca, but commonly referred to as killer whales, here at SeaWorld, we like to call them Katina, Nalani, Lalia, Trua, and Makayo, our killer whale family. Makayo is our youngest whale at just 12 years old, and our oldest whale is Makayo's mother, Katina, who this year celebrated her 46th birthday. Katina is also the matriarch or leader of our pod. SeaWorld's animal training techniques create a language between us and the whales. It's a language of learning through positive reinforcement, encouragement, commitment, and care. Through these techniques and our relationships, the whales learn to trust us. They even learn to take an active role in their very own health and well-being. Now one of the first health care or husbandry behaviors that the whales learn is this behavior, which we call a, a fluke present. The whales learn to roll ventral or upside down and present us with their tail flukes. It gives us a great view of their entire body and it also gives us access to the blood vessels that are easily seen on the white underside of these tail flukes. Our veterinarians collect a blood sample at least once a month and the whales are trained to remain calm and relaxed throughout the procedure. Now as trainers, you'll always see us rubbing down or massaging the whales, whether on their backs or those pectoral flippers or the tail flukes. The whales have very sensitive skin and this is just one way that we're able to reward them for remaining calm during procedures like this. It's also a great way for us to strengthen our relationships with the whales. Blood samples are just one way that we're able to take great care of our killer whales. Another important diagnostic is weighing the whales. We're actually able to weigh the whales by asking them to slide their bodies up and out of the water, but onto a giant killer whale sized scale that we have in one of our adjacent pools. Katina, our matriarch, is demonstrating the same behavior here in our slide out area. We will notice that the portion of Katina's body from her dorsal fin to her tail is in the water right now. That's the powerhouse of the whale. It's called the peduncle. And with that still in the water, we would not be weighing all of Katina. We're able to solve that problem by simply asking her to lift her tail up and out of the water. Training this posture ensures accuracy, so we know our younger whales are growing properly and that our older whales are maintaining a healthy weight. And the care isn't just physical. Mental stimulation and play are vital and we surprise and engage with our whales at every opportunity. Play is how killer whales teach their young to hunt. And for the adults, play is important too. It seems that they just enjoy having fun. Making time for play is an important part of life for killer whales and for us. Hey everybody, we're over on the left side of the stadium down by the glass. We just learned that killer whales love to play. And they actually learn a lot by playing and through observational learning and mimicry. And we're going to put that to the test with Nalani and everybody here on the left side of the stadium. So if you guys would like to participate, stay right where you are, but just stand up. 
This is a little game of killer whale follow the leader, and our leader today is Oakley. Hi, Oakley. All right, so here's what everybody's gonna do. Oakley knows what we're doing. We're gonna wave two hands at Nalani on the count of three, just like that, all right? Ready, Oakley? She's watching you. One, two, three, wave! Everybody wave! And she's got it! Very good! Great job, Oakley! As you can see, Nalani was paying very close attention to you guys. You can have a seat, thank you so much. Killer whales can see great both below and above the, the water, and they can often be seen jumping completely out of the water to get a better look around. Nalani's gonna demonstrate this at the stage with a behavior we call a bow. Give her a cheer! All right, right side, we're coming your way now. We've got an even bigger behavior called a breach. And just like a bow, killer whales will breach to get a better look around, but more often than not, they'll breach to show off and let the other whales know that they have arrived. So, speaking of arriving, this is my friend Chris, who's here to help us and lead this side. So why don't you guys stand up here on the right side? What are we doing, Justin? Oh, great. All right, here's your hand signal, everybody. Make your little field goal. It's gonna go over your left shoulder, just like that. All right, ready, Chris? Malia's watching you. One, two, three. There it is! All right, she took right off, Chris. Keep a good eye on her. She's gonna head all the way to the bottom of the pool. You gotta watch her entire run. She's gonna need a lot of speed for this one. Here comes Malia, showing off. Oh. <laughs> Chris, you got a little wet there. Man, it's a good thing I was over there. <laughs> Thanks for being a good sport. Have a great time. All right, let's hear it for Chris, Oakley, and all three of our female killer whales. SeaWorld's research and observation of the killer whales in our care has shed light on many mysteries about these amazing animals. For example, we know that the gestation period of a pregnant killer whale is 17 months. That's information that would be impossible to obtain in the wild. Some information, however, can only be gained through field research. And that's why SeaWorld partners with such research groups as the Norwegian Orca Survey and NOAA to further global education. We've learned that killer whales are powerful animals, and perhaps the best expression of that power can be seen when they hunt. Killer whales stand apart. They have no natural predators, and just about any other ocean animal can be their dinner. Depending on where they live and their chosen prey, they've developed some epic hunting techniques. Off the coast of South America, killer whales will teach themselves, riding in on waves just long enough to catch prey. They'll also create waves that knock animals like penguins or seals from icebergs. Most importantly, they cooperate, communicate, and coordinate as a team. Here's footage of killer whales corralling a school of herring. A whale dips in and feeds, while the other whales keep the fish together with swipes of their tail fins. So killer whales create waves when they hunt, and they use their powerful tail flutes to stun their prey. You're about to see a demonstration. For our whales, it's a high energy activity session, but for you, it means it's time to get wet.
As you can see, killer whales are amazing athletes, and they can eat several hundred pounds of food every day. In the ocean, their diet depends on where they live and the time of year. Unfortunately, overfishing, pollution, and other problems are having some serious impacts on some killer whale populations. Killer whales are impressive animals, and it's pretty obvious why they're the top predator in the ocean. That means killer whales are invincible, right? Wrong. Killer whales depend on a plentiful food source and a clean environment. second there I got it back on uh, that is it for my phone so I hope you guys had a great time watching our video today uh, as always have a great new year hope you enjoyed our video click like subscribe and share with Butterwack and good day guys